Hi and welcome to another video. It's been a while, uh, there hasn't been too much news, but we have a bumper release on Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android. So let's just zoom in a little bit and let's see what we have. So, doing some remote control stuff there on Neat Pulse. Very, very cool product. So here we have the latest release notes for the Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android. And let's run through what features have been rolled out or that will be rolling out. So meeting ID and passcode. So this is where we can put an extra layer of security. So originally, if you hit the join button, boom, you're in the meeting or you're in the lobby and you can be admitted. However, if you have an MTR in a public space that you don't want people walking into, or maybe the boardroom, you don't want people just walking in and joining meetings, then by enabling this feature, this will allow you to make sure you've got that using the ID and passcode. So whether it's on your cell phone, it's on your laptop, you have to key that in. And we'll show you that in a bit on how you enable that. Now, there is a little note next to this. The meeting ID and passcode feature will be uh, fully rolled out in March 24. So what else do we have? New calendar views. So this is where it's matching the Teams panel outside the room and also Microsoft Teams rooms on Windows. So again, users won't know the look and feel, be exactly the same between all the rooms that you have, whether it's Windows or Android. As you see here, there's a note, any available time uh, slots for 11 minutes or more will be shown uh, on there with a the green or purple uh, bar. We also have improved view switcher for front of room uh, display controls. Again, this is mirroring Microsoft Teams rooms on Windows, that same look and feel UI when we go into the layout switcher and when we jump into a call, we'll see how that looks. Um, but this also allows you then to set some defaults. So for example, if you are using front row, what you want on the left and what you want on the right. So if you want some raised hands and some chat, you can have that or vice versa, whatever you decide, or maybe just one on the left, nothing on the right, for example, or vice versa. We also have the ability now to support Teams Premium features that were already, we had watermarks, but now we have end-to-end -end encryption and sensitivity labels are supported in this latest app. A point-to-point -point call or dialing outside of Microsoft Teams rooms. So we have the ability to call people externally when we had um the platform uh last year but in last year's update when we moved from um a meet to a meet now sort of experience well, that broke that ability to dial out but that's back now so we can now call people externally directly from the pad and other reliability and uh improvements etc on there so let's look at each one of these in detail so here we have my team's room next to me this is what we have today this is the ui uh, we get the calendar, we get the join button, we can see we can, we've got meet, and then we have the ability to whiteboard, share content, join meeting ID, uh, etc. But let's actually look on the feature, and we'll look at what's in the background in the settings. So we'll dive in here, and we'll go into our team settings. So we're signed in. So one of the things I've noticed is that calling is missing from the new build. We'll talk about that in a second when we show that. But this is where you can set up auto answer and some other advanced things. Maybe that will come back in. However, in general, again, we won't see things in here. Um, but let's look at what we've got. So we can see we've got the ability to show meeting chat, extend room reservation. Again, that's part of the pro license. And today we can choose our default stage. So between content and gallery, front row, uh, and what layout you want there. So what does that look like now in the new version? So why don't we compare things side by side? Here we go. Let's just jump back to the home screen. So here you can see the differences between the two platforms now. So on my left, <laughs> it's that, that way, you can see we've got the icons there, but on the new UI, we now have, and actually rather than say meet, it says meet now. We also have a call button. So when I hit call, what we're able to do now is actually dial out, so I've got PSN calling on here as well, but I'm able to call people directly. Then we still have whiteboard, join by ID, etc. But let's just jump into the UI here, and we can then see exactly what there is on there. So let me just do a meet now example. So when I hit meet now, nothing changes here. It's the device behind me, and there we go, we're in a call ready to, to, to do anything we need to. So nothing exciting there. Uh, we'll go into the layout switcher stuff in a bit. But what we want to have a look at is those settings within the Teams admin settings. So we can go into our Teams, Teams admin. And as I say, 
Corlin's missing. I hope that will come back. Nothing changes in general. In the meetings, this is where we have require passcode for all meetings. We also have the the ability to actually that's moved around a bit, has it? Uh, HDMI options are over here now rather than general. Here we have the ability for front row. What our defaults are, left and right. What do we want on there? So do we want raised hands, for example? We can enable that over there. Okay, wireless connections has moved over there. Interesting. Why don't we uh, put these side by side so you can get an understanding of what's changed? So if you can tell any of our admins. So we can see here, content sharing was here. Uh, it's now changed to wireless sharing under general, and then under meetings, all our options plus content sharing. So there's a little switch around here in the uh, admin settings. So you just need to be aware of that when you start looking for things. But what I want to do on here is actually enable the required passcode for all meetings. And what this means is when we come out of here and we do attempt to join this scheduled meeting, it's now asking me for that username and password. So I need to know these credentials for the meeting ID. So it's already got the meeting ID on there. So I just need the credentials of the passcode. So let's just grab that. And this is case sensitive. And I hit join. And as you can see, I've got some friends in the call already. And if I do the same on the other side now, I hit join. Obviously, I'm straight into the meeting. So no differences here in the UI on what's happening. But if I go to our layout switcher now, so you can see what we previously had. We had together mode, so we could put that on. And then we could then put everyone on the stage how we want it. Well, that's a new look and feel. That's very cool. I like we then also had large gallery. So if you had lots of people, over nine people, then you get a large gallery view. And then we have um, front row. So we could see what's happening on there. Let's just send in some content. And again, we also have the option to switch orientation as well. Uh, so when we are in large gallery mode, there is the option to switch in orientation. That was, it's now disappeared. So when I sending content in here, so just so you get a look and feel, so you can see when you've got front row, we will have the presentation there in the middle. So again, we can go back to gallery. This is what we had originally. This is what we would see. And we could have our content in gallery. So people down the bottom. Then we could just focus on content, large gallery, but also the content uh, or, or obviously our together mode. So what does this look like on the new version of the app? So when I hit the layout switcher, Look how much different it is. Very, very different. So I've got the gallery and I've got content and people. I could focus on people only. There we go. And then I can go back to there. But I can also show chat as well. If we move people down the bottom, if we have chat on, again, I've got the large gallery option, large gallery with chat as well as an option. Together mode, again, we can do together mode with chat. Again, we can also go front row. Remember, I set this default in my application, what I want on the left, what I want on the right. Uh, but I can also hide it during the meeting as well. So I can come out of there and have that on there. I can focus on content. So make content full screen, and obviously with chat on or off as well. So that is the new UI switcher. Some nice things on there. So they were back to what it looks like again. We can also then turn our chat off here. So little UI changes, how things are laid out, etc., which is uh, quite nice. So that's meeting ID and passcode. Let's just jump back. So meeting ID and passcode, I've shown you how, how we do that. Some of it won't roll out to all tenants until then. And I guess there might be a difference with uh, GCC, GCC high potentially, maybe. Calendar views, we've seen that, what it looks like on there. Well, I'll have to show the uh, center room controller as well in a second. Improve switcher front of room and then we have the art uh, let's show you the the call out mechanism actually because that's quite important but the first i want to just get in here all righty so let's jump in over here and let's start looking at so this is the current platform so what i want to do is actually hang up the call so previously if i went to go and hit meet devices there just above me and obviously i want to add participants so from the controller on the desktop, now this is in my uh, demo tenant. So if I try to add in someone outside this organization, my email address is no secret. We can't find anyone. It couldn't connect to anyone outside. You had to have a scheduled call to make this happen. What has changed? So let's jump over to the new UI and see what's changed. So there's two ways to do it. I've now got my call option, so I can hit call. 
And what I can do in here now is obviously type in a number, or I can type my name properly. So now you can see external. So I can see someone there, and I can then proceed to call. So now I'm able to make a call point to point, one tenant to another, and here's me on my neat frame running Teams display. Very simple. But what about when you're in a scheduled call? So you joined a meeting, and you think, oh, we need to go and bring in Bob from our auditing team. So again, you can either do a meet now or join that scheduled call. We'll just hit meet now. So again, we can invite people to join. So once we're in meet now, and I can then call out to someone externally. And there we have it, the ability to make that uh, call inside to outside. So it's taken a year to come back, but it's back and we're able to contact anyone externally now on there. So that's what we have in the latest updates for our Microsoft Teams rooms. Uh, 2.1 is a new naming mechanism or 2.1.0 is a new naming mechanism. This is rolling out through your Teams admin center. So you'll be able to push this out to your devices. So again, a note on this. Actually, let's just uh, jump into Teams admin center quickly. What you're able to do, all you have to do is update your bar and then the pad will follow on and update automatically. If you try and update your pad individually or your touch console, it will fail. So there's a great new mechanism in here now to um, make sure that the devices uh, when you update one, uh, it won't fail. So we'll just pick here my colleague at all, and then we can scroll down. We can look at the health, and we can see what version it's currently on, and then we can see the variable updates, and then we can choose to push that version of that app out. And again, I just need to do the uh, touch console. I don't need to go in and do the pad as well. That will put an error up the top saying, uh, you can't uh, deploy this. I think, sorry, this has failed. Mm. So just do it from the updates. Now, one thing I just want to quick look at is configuration profiles. So do we have a option for any of the new settings in here? Um, maintenance window, just remember they're not supported on Meet devices just yet. Um, so no. So none of those new feature. So the, the, the main feature I was looking at here was the enablement of meeting ID and passcode. It's off by default, so you won't get a surprise on all your meetings. Um, if you want to enable it, you have to go to a device or use something very cool like Neat Pulse and remotely control that. So any questions, let me know and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Thanks all.